Hey friends, welcome to the channel. I'm Sam Benton. In this video, I'm going to tell you my top five tackles that I got while I was a police officer. I played football in high school. I wasn't really that good at it, but I feel like later on in life, I redeemed myself here. Number five. A while back, I was field training somebody. We saw some guy taking a piss on the side of the road. You're not supposed to just piss in public. It's gross. So we stopped them to give him a warning. The recruit that I was field training took his ID and ran his driver's license. However, he made a mistake and didn't run him through warrants. I, as a field trainer, should have caught this. But but we both missed it. After this guy had already left, we realized that he had a warrant. So we went looking for him and couldn't find him. The next day, I thought I saw that same guy. So I stopped him and got his ID. I realized it wasn't him. So I handed his ID back and said, you're free to go. At that point, I asked him for his consent to search him. He said, you can search me and walk towards me. I reached into his pocket and pulled out a cigarette box. Inside the cigarette box was heroin pills. At that point, he slapped them out of my hands and took off running down the street. I chased after him and said, I'm going to tackle you, bro. This warning didn't work and he just kept running. So I did kind of a diving tackle. We both fell over. He gets back up and then my very excited partner tackles him. We arrested this guy for CDS violation. You're good to go. You're free to go. Just so that we're, you know, doing our job, covering our bases. There's been a lot of burglaries and stuff in the area. You mind if we check for any kind of tools or anything like that? What's that? I, I'm asking you for your consent. Do you mind if we check it quick? Okay. Cigarettes? Okay, what's this? Sure. Right. Yeah, that's what's that? Fuck! Number four. This was before body cameras, so I don't have any footage for you here. In the early days of my career, somebody called in two suspicious characters conducting a hand to hand drug sale. I detained these two subjects. It became obvious to me that these two subjects were involved in some kind of drug deal, and one of them was carrying a plastic bag. I took the bag from the one subject, and in doing so, simply looked down inside and saw that it was full of drug paraphernalia. This is called the Plain View Doctrine. At this point, I had probable cause to search the two individuals. I'll be referring to the first subject as Mo. I searched Mo's pockets. She was carrying fentanyl. The second subject took off running. That's just too bad. You can only focus on one. Mo gives me a shove and tries to take off running herself. My partner stands there just watching me, not doing anything. So I tackle Mo and I'm trying to get her down, but I swear she greased herself up with baby oil or something before this, and I couldn't quite get a hold of her. So I warned her. I said, I'm going to pepper spray you if you keep fighting me like this. Of course, she doesn't listen, so I pepper spray her. For some strange reason, I'm pretty much immune to pepper spray, so it didn't bother me. Mo gets released on her own recognizance, but that was fine. I'd catch her again here soon. Six months later, I see her at the same park doing the same thing, dealing fentanyl. So I say, hey, Mo, come here. Of course, at this point, she knows the game. She just takes off running. I had set up a bit of an ambush before this, so she was surrounded by other police officers. I tackled her again. This time, she had 10 vials of heroin in her pants, as well as $600 stuffed in her sock. That was enough to charge her with possession with intent to distribute. Mo actually went to jail for this, although she's been out and arrested for the same thing several times since since then. Number three, one time I got dispatched to a disturbance at a nursing home. I get in there and this place is a mess. I mean, there are all kinds of violations going on here. There's old people in the basement with no elevator. I mean, that's a major fire hazard. The place is a wreck. The patients are fighting each other. So I called the fire department. The employee working there wanted nothing to do with it. He wouldn't stop and talk to me. He gave me a fake name and he was gone. I got his real name from one of the elderly folks there, run him through police databases, figure out who he was. Was. Turns out he had a warrant. I go out to chase him. His girlfriend calls him and warns him I'm coming. So he's running by the time I even see him. We are all the way in the corner of the precinct. There's no backup anywhere nearby. I chase him for probably half a mile before I finally caught him. This was a good one. Number two of my best police tackles, the stripper. There was a stripper causing a disturbance at a motel. Happens every day. So management decides to kick her out. Fair enough. 
private property. So the stripper's got to leave. She gathers up her suitcase and thongs and stacks a hundred dollar bills, whatever strippers have. And she leaves the motel. But for some reason, she decides to block traffic. She runs back and forth, back and forth across the traffic lanes, stopping in front of cars, almost causing crashes. We tell her to knock it off or she's going to get arrested. I hate locking people up for disorderly conduct, but in this case, it was pretty fitting. She kept doing it. She kept running in front of cars, almost causing accidents. So my partner and I chase her down. This little girl was probably five foot tall, a hundred pounds. 20 pounds of that was probably, well, you know, but she was fast. When I tackled her, I landed right on top of her. But thankfully, there was plenty of cushion for the fall. Number one, my entire precinct was looking for this burglary suspect. He had run from police earlier that day. They surrounded his house. He still made it out and escaped a second time. I happened to be in the right place at the right time, park the car. I get out, run into the woods, and there he is crossing the stream. I tell him to stop. He turns around, gives me this MF or look, starts opening up a knife as I'm about to tackle him. I'm already in motion at this point, so I tackle him, knife still in his hand. That's when my partners get there. I tell him, knife, knife, he's got a knife. They hit him over the head with the radio. I was able to take the knife away. Nobody was hurt, and we took him into custody. He headed back up the hill to the far side ravine. He's in the middle of the ravine. He's making his way in the outside. The cool thing about this is my wife was actually there to see the whole thing. This was the only ride along she ever went on, so I guess she figured I kind of do this stuff every day. I didn't. There's my top five list, but I got to give you one dishonorable mention here. It was a nice, quiet Sunday morning on patrol. We all started eating our breakfast. A huge, fat, naked guy decided to go streaking through a tennis and golf club. Understandably, the rich white people there were not happy about this, so they called the police. I show up. This guy is covered in mud and feces, and he's very sweaty and hairy and huge. Of course, he doesn't listen to us. It just keeps running circles around. So finally, I have to do the unpleasant task of tackling this guy to the ground. He looks at me and says, hey, I got something for you. Lifts up his leg and just <laughs> shits everywhere. It was disgusting. It was a nasty job, but somebody had to do it. I hope you enjoyed these stories. I'm Sam Benton, and I'll see you in the next video. Goodbye.